All right, I'm gonna give it like a couple more seconds. Um, there's still people coming on, um, but as we're as I'm waiting to let some more people in, I am super excited that I have brand new people to me here today, and um, some people I know in person, but some people I've never seen. And so thank you for trusting this um, or trusting your friends who made you sign up for this. Um, and so just a brief little something. This is mostly to have some fun. You move in different ways, in ways that you've never moved before, potentially, um, but always in the background of your movement effort is if it doesn't feel good, stop it. <laughs> so if, if there is there is pain or discomfort, um, your body is talking to you and telling you something and say, oh, don't, don't, don't quite do that right now. I will try and make this class. So this class is, is pretty low level. I'm not going to push super hard. Is there still no, is the sound, did it go away again? We're still, still okay hearing me? Maybe I should take these out. The microphone is on the way. It's still not, okay, yes, you can't. Everybody's shaking their heads. Can you hear me? Good, okay, great. So yeah, so that's basically the, the, the setup. Um, we're gonna be spending a lot of time on the floor. Um, yeah, it gave me an unstable connection. I hope it's, I hope it's gonna be okay. Um, yeah, so let's, let's, let's get going. And I want you to first start actually lying on your backs, if that is, yeah, that should be possible. And I'm not always gonna show everything I'm doing. I'm gonna try and talk you through it so I can see you where I can see you. Um, if you have a camera, if you want me to, and I'll, I'll try to see if, if there's anything I need to correct. So just start out with lying on your back. And I asked for either a pillow or a towel or a blanket, something just to put underneath your head. So we can, we can just have a good alignment between the head and the ribs and the pelvis. And just straighten your legs for a moment and just, just kind of feel in. So I am a huge fan of finding the difference. And we're all coming from where we're coming in our day today. Maybe you've been already really busy or not or moving or not. So just kind of close your eyes for a moment let your feet turn out, let your, let your legs and your hips completely relax. And then just take an arms by your side, the palms can face up or down, whatever feels good to you. And just take a nice moment here and just check in with your body. Is there anything that feels great or doesn't feel so good? Where are my bones touching the earth? And this is no judgment, this is just, becoming aware and just taking a little mental snapshot of where, where we are. Because it's really important to actually then hopefully feel the difference when we're done with this 55-minute um, class. So taking a nice moment and take a couple of deep breaths in. Filling the ribs feeling the back of the body, maybe your ribs start to touch the ground a little bit more, breathing all the way down into your pelvis. And then on the exhale, allowing for the earth to hold you a little bit more. So we're sinking our body a little bit deeper down into the, into the earth. Taking another deep breath in. Filling up the lungs, the abdomen, down your legs, into the soles of the feet, maybe even into the cranium, into your head. And then letting that go. And just one more time. Nice big breath in, filling everything up. 
expanding your wingspan of the rib cage, broadening the shoulders a little bit. And exhale, letting everything soften and release. And then slowly bend your knees, walk your feet uh, so the soles of your feet are touching the ground. And just do a couple of little, what we call pelvic tilts. So where you can put your hands onto your hip bones here on either side and start to gently rock your pelvis. And this might be big or small, no judgment again, no, just observing. As I, I call this sticking your butt out, so your sits bones dropping down and away from your rib cage, that creates a bigger arch in your lumbar spine. And as you curl, or tucking the pelvis, you would let your low back soften down into the ground and your sits bones would effectively reach up towards your knees. And so we're gonna just do a couple of these here and feel in our both hips doing the same thing at the same time. We have two hip bones. They're connected at the sacrum in the back. And those two hip bones can definitely do different things. But in this case, we're trying to actually make them do the same thing. So just checking in saying, okay, is my right hip moving as fast as my left hip? Is my right hip or my left hip moving as far as the other hip? And you're gonna keep your breath. So just feeling that gentle rocking of the pelvis. We'll do one more time, letting the kidneys drop. So the kidneys, this is a, a place I cue a lot, is right on top behind in the back body of your, of your hip bone, where your hip bones end, between your ribs and your hips. And that is a very important marker throughout the whole class. So I will talk a lot about your kidneys. Above that, above your kidneys, keep your arch and curl is in the back body where the, where the spine is attaches to your spine is your diaphragm, which is your muscle for inspiration and expiration. That's another good landmark. And then above that, for most people know where that is, it's your bra strap, even if you don't wear one. Um, but it's a, also a great marker to know where our ribs are. So we're talking, I'm gonna be talking a lot about your kidneys, about your diaphragm and about the bra strap area. Okay, so we found our little arch and curl. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come up to sitting and we will explore that a little bit more, but with more effort. So if uh, sitting upright for you looks more like this, which is just a tightness and an inflexibility in the hips, not a, not a big deal sit on a blanket or sit on a, on a, on a thick towel or, or a pillow. So we, we're trying to actually come to a place of where we can stack our head and our ribs and our pelvis right in line with each other. So if this is you sitting upright, grab something to, to sit on so that we are able to find our little arch and curl that we just did. Okay, so let's cross the legs with your right leg in front, right foot in front. And if bending the knees is an issue, you can also come into a little bit of a wider seat. What we're gonna be working on throughout this is also more flexibility and strength for your, for your knees. But if you can, bend your knees quite a bit and sit nice and upright. And then we're going to do our little arch and curl seated now. So. We're starting to push. So I teach also a lot with imagery. Um, imagining what we're going to do is going to help you do it and actually connect your brain on a different level to your, to your physical body. So we're going to push the ground underneath us forward. And then we're going to pull the ground underneath us backward. And we're going to push the ground underneath us forward. And we're gonna pull the ground backward. Keep doing that. 
as you push the ground forward, your lumbar spine starts to round a little bit and you should start to feel some small engagement in your abdominals. And as you push the ground with your sits bones backward, your glutes should start and your legs should start to turn on a little bit more. So noticing one thing, and I wore my, my stripy shirt and I can see it, we're not going to move from our rib cage, but we're moving very low from our pelvis. So it's a very small, potentially very small move, but it's a movement that comes from our hip extensors, our hip flexors, and that's what it should be since we're moving the hip. So a couple more here, a little, little round, and then maybe adding some arm movement here. So as I'm rounding back and I'm pushing the earth forward, I'm pushing my hands forward as if I would say stop. And then I'm pulling my sits bones back and starting to bend my elbows as if I was pulling something really heavy and I'm gonna squeeze my shoulders together a little bit. Now watch the ribs want to lift up. Can I keep my ribs just about neutral? I'm going to push the earth forward. I'm going to say stop with my hands. My spine is rounding. And then I'm pulling my sits bones behind me. I'm bending my elbows. I'm squeezing my shoulders together. And maybe you kind of lift even your chin up a little bit, looking up to the ceiling. So this is extension. And as we're rounding the spine, this is called flexion. Let's do this two more times. My sits bones pull the mat behind me. I'm squeezing my shoulders. My glutes are engaged. So you should feel your buttocks muscles being part of this. My shoulders squeeze together, my heart lifts up. Now, can you stay here and take your diaphragm, which is right the lower part of your rib cage, slightly back in space. And that should activate your core muscles a little bit more. Let's do one more time. Pushing forward with your sits bones, saying stop, and then pull the sits bones back. And you're going to squeeze the shoulders, looking up but keeping your diaphragm slightly back. And then let that release for a moment. Okay, now let's cross the legs the other way. Core to me, and I want to explain that briefly, is not just the abdominals. Core in your body is everything that connects to the center of your body, which are your hip muscles, your leg muscles, your glute muscles, your abdominal muscles. And you could argue even you could connect your shoulders to your core. I would argue that too. So now we're going to do some little circles, little hip circles. I'm going to show the front. I am going to push my sits bones back as we just did. And then I'm finding a little forward bend and I'm starting to rock as if I'm hula hooping. My pelvis mostly, my ribs start to follow a little bit, but I am not moving my ribs to move my pelvis. I'm trying to move my pelvis to move my ribs. If you need to hold on with your hands to the floor or to your legs, that's totally fine. But see if you can initiate and really focus on finding the movement in the pelvis. And that is not an easy task, I'll tell you right away. If, you, if you're confused right now already, great. Keep going. Confusion is something that we, that the brain kind of feeds off and then learning your growing brain cells it's it's an it's an excellent thing to do slightly confused keep going and learn very good nice very good let's change the direction of the circle so we're rolling back and then we're pushing that in my case the left sits bone back and then i have both sits bones heavy you should start to feel quite some sensation around your hip joints. That is great. 
I'm gonna show my side again, just in case you need a look. So as I roll forward, I'm trying not to do this. This would be extension in my spine. So as I round forward, I want to pull my diaphragm and my bra strap a little bit back. And that, and then I'm trying to hold that in space. So as I roll back, I'm trying not to arch my back here. I'm rounding my spine the whole time. That is your core and abdominal core. We're holding our spine in a position and we're moving our pelvis. And then you can even say, you know, what, what do I want to do with my arms? I can do anything with my arms as long as I'm still focusing on moving my hip first. Very good. Excellent. Let's straighten the legs. And with straight, I mean, keep them slightly bent. <laughs> um, so um, one thing is if, if, if your legs would, if your knees would be able to touch the floor here, bend them a tiny bit. We, we, we don't want to hyperextend the knees, which is going beyond the natural range of what the joint is protected with, with your muscles. And um, for the sake of the exercise, we actually, we want to keep the knees bent here. So any width is fine. You don't have to go any particular far or you know, a little bit wider than what a mat, yoga mat would be like. And then we're going to start and we're going to side bend. We're gonna go and reach the right hand towards your right foot. But at the same time, pull your heels down into the floor. So that should turn on your legs, maybe even your glutes. You do not want to feel a stretch here. I can't, it is a stretch is your body saying stop. And we're very conditioned to stretch a lot. So let's pull the right heel down into the floor and you're, you're aiming with your right fingers towards your right toes. And let's roll through the middle. And then we're gonna reach our left hand to our left foot. And we're gonna come up to sitting again. And then we're going to reach left hand to left toes. Do not want to touch them. It doesn't matter, right? We want to pull that left heel down into the floor and work. Your, your left hamstrings should be talking to you. And we're going to roll through the middle. And then it's the right hand towards the right foot. And then push down into your right leg to come up to sitting. My, my hip flexors are talking to me at this point. So if you need a little break, let's just kind of shake it out. You should be feeling your legs, right? Now let's pull those sits bones back again, pull the heels down into the floor, feel how the whole lower body starts to activate. Take the diaphragm a little bit back and we're gonna go back in. So we're doing a side bend to the right. We're going to roll through the center. I'm picking up my kidneys to the ceiling. I'm gonna to reach to the left and I push down into my left leg to come up sitting. And we'll do one more. I'm gonna side bend to the left. I'm going to pull the heels and the sits bones down and back, side bending to the right, and then push down into the right leg to come up. And then take a moment, shake that out. Okay, let's bend the knees one more time. Let's put the right foot in front. So this is all part of loosening yet strengthening your hips. You don't wanna stretch your hips, you want to strengthen your hips and then they will be less painful and give you way more support for daily life. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up, we're going into the side bend theme. Let's take the right hand to the floor and the hand, can be far away. The closer your hand comes to your pelvis, the harder this exercise will be. So hand about maybe eight, 10 inches away from the pelvis is fine. But again, the closer, let's start about eight to 10 inches. So we're going to start and dig your fingers down into the floor and imagine you, you're pulling yourself down toward the floor. I'm trying to keep my elbow very close to my right kidney and I'm squeezing my right shoulder blade back towards my spine. And then I'm gonna push up. We'll do this again. 
So right hand down, I'm gonna use my fingers like the cat's paws. I'm, I'm grabbing onto the earth and I'm pulling myself to the floor. And then I'm gonna push up. Is my chest lifted or is my diaphragm still going backward? One more time on the right side. If this bothers your left ankle, push that foot a little bit more into the ground. This is a lot of flexibility that's asked from your ankle here. And some of us might not have that. So let's do the same thing on the other side. And just even putting your hand on the ground and pulling your hand towards you, you should start to feel activation in your shoulder and in your bicep, tricep muscles. So we're gonna go pull down, my right hip lifts, and I'm gonna push up. Nice. And I'm gonna pull the hand isometrically, meaning the hand is not really moving. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining I wanna pull the hand towards my pelvis. And we'll do this one more time. Making sure the elbow stays close to the rib cage and your shoulder is not coming up to your ear. And then coming back up. So we're gonna do this side to side. So I'm gonna pull on the right side, my shoulder slides down the back, and I'm gonna take my head and look over my right shoulder. I'm still grabbing on with my right fingertips to the floor, and I'm gonna push up. And I'm gonna to go to the left, grabbing on, shoulder sliding down the back, and turn your head to look over your left shoulder. Pull that left upper arm and shoulder blade away from your ear. So we're not side bending here. We want to have a long neck as long as possible. Let's do this one more time each side, pulling down and looking over the right shoulder. Keep the kidneys back, pull the sits bones back on your mat. And then one more time, or on the pillow that you're sitting on, right? We want to keep activity in the legs and just come up to sitting, take a moment here, and then pull one more time your sits bones back and push your legs down into the floor. Settle the diaphragm back slightly, bra strap back, and feel the amount, feel the work that is happening again in your body and you're not even moving. So that is, Isometric work, we're really, I really love it. It's not very functional during the day all the time. We just don't want to hold something. But for this, this kind of workout, the isometric work is amazing. All right. So let's come back on your, lie on your back. So we're, if you have that little pillow handy, if you need it, and you really only need it if your head feels like, it's falling back too much if you're if you don't have it so we're we just want to make sure we have a good setup here for the head and neck and then straighten your legs one more time and just kind of check in take a nice deep breath let the legs turn out the hips are relaxed and just feel where where does your body touch the earth is 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 there a change did, did a change already happen? Maybe you feel a little tingling through the hip area. That would be a great thing. You know, we just really worked your hip muscles. And then slowly walk your feet in. So your feet are flat on the floor. And we're gonna add the core part, the abdominal part <laughs> to, the, to the exercise, to the whole workout. So my pelvis is heavy. So I'm tilting my sits bones away. But at the same time, I'm softening my ribs down into the floor. You're going to also pull your feet down into the floor. There's my isometric again. That should turn on your glutes and your hamstrings. And then see if you can pull the upper arm bone heads, the shoulder blades, a little bit more into the floor. In the perfect world of unicorns, your, your whole back body should be working, including your abdominal and then let that go. We'll do this two more times. So we're finding the work in the back body, which is not something we do too much on a daily basis. Unfortunately, we need to be way more active for our back body to create a better posture. 
So we're, we're dropping the sits bones. You're going to stick your butt out. You're going to drop your kidneys at the same time or slightly thereafter. That should start to already find activity in your glute muscles and in your abdominals. And you can pull your feet into the earth. Imagine you wanted to push your pelvis up. Don't lift it yet. And then pull the shoulders down into the floor. And watch now, did your heart just lift? Can we soften the heart back into the floor and feel work? You have to hold yourself to the earth right now. Imagine you, you would float away if you didn't do that. And then let that release. I will do that one more time. Sits bones are heavy. Kidneys are heavy. That is always, we do not want a huge back bend in the lower back. We want a small back bend, tiny little lift. And that lift should be as big as the lift in your head, uh, in your neck. And that, that is kind of why we have that pillow here. So that, that lift is not too big. Okay, we're gonna pull the feet down, the kidneys down. We're gonna pull the shoulders and then even pull the skull a little bit back into the floor and feel the whole back body showing up. Glutes, hamstrings, your toes are, are grabbing the floor. Your upper arm bones pulling into the floor, opening the chest a little bit. One deep breath and exhale. All right, we're gonna make this a little bit harder. Now we're going to lift one leg and you don't have to even lift the foot any, any particular height. You can just lift the leg so the knee is right in line with your hip bone pulling your arms down into the floor. Now, if you think lifting the second leg is not a great idea, lower the first leg back down and then pick up the left leg. If you've been with me before, if you're working with me currently, you definitely can lift your second leg up, but feel what happened to the rib cage. Did my ribs lift up? Did my bra strap area leave the floor? Or can I settle the kidneys and the bra strap area back down into the ground? And then slowly one leg at a time. We always wanna move one leg at a time or you can lift one leg and then the other leg, right? So this is really, this is really up to you. If, you, if this at all bothers your lower back, switch to the single leg work have one leg lifted at a time. But if you feel, if you feel this is, you know, this is not a big deal, definitely both legs can lift. Now, noticing if my pelvis wants to tilt and tuck here, we want to make sure that the pelvis is very much grounded in the floor. My kidneys are heavy. Let's do this one more time pulling your upper arm bones also down into the floor. You might feel your triceps working. And let's see, if you have only one leg lifted, you can start to just straighten one leg up to the ceiling. If you have both legs lifted, give it a little shot. Draw the kidneys down into the floor as you start to straighten. And that means they always stay a little bit bent at the end straighten and bend your knees. So we're doing little pulses. Slowly move. This is the part of the slow core. The slower you can move, the more authority you have or you need. Fast, anybody can do fast. Slow, not so much. Turn the legs a little bit in so the big toes are closer than your heels. So we're slightly pigeon toeing our legs, the knees and the toes facing in the same direction. And then slowly finish that up, lower one leg at a time and take a little moment. Straighten your legs again and just check in again. I can definitely feel my pelvis is way heavier than before. I have way more space here in my lumbar spine. Whatever you feel is good. Right, it's all part of the, the process. Okay, let's bend the knees again. And you're going to drop your sits bones and you're gonna drop your kidneys. So we're, we're creating that stability in the lumbar spine and in the pelvis. And let's see if we can all lift our head up and look at our legs. 
very small lift, and then slowly lower the head back down. Now, hopefully you feel this in the front of your neck, right? The, the chin gets drawn a little bit down towards your sternum, towards the first rib ring, and then slowly lower that down. So part of the core of the deep abdominal front line goes all the way up into your throat. So for good core, we definitely need a good neck. Keep doing that. Slowly lower that down. The slow lowering is actually even more beneficial than the slow lifting. And one more time, looking at your legs, and then see if you can float your arms up off the floor, maybe like five, six inches. Feel how that changes the activity. It's getting a little harder. And then slowly lower that down. Okay. If this was good for you, if you felt fine, let's add a bit on. If you, if, if you felt this was a big challenge, which definitely could be the case, um, do four more of that. Um, if you feel this a lot in the back of your neck, um, it's probably the back of the neck being really tight uh, because of we're sitting in front of computers a lot these days. So it's, it's more like this position that our head assumes. But what we're trying to do is actually to lengthen the back of the neck. So we're going to lift the head back up and then see if you can actually lift your legs as well. So my legs are in what we would call the tabletop and my head is in an abdominal curl, my head, and my head, leg and upper back. And I'm gonna slowly lower one foot and the other foot. And I'm gonna slowly lower my head down. Let's do that again. We're going to lift the feet first, one leg at a time. And then I'm going to slowly lift my head up. And then take your hands onto your thigh bones, onto your quads, and just give it a gentle push. You're pushing your hands into your legs and your legs into your hands. Flex your feet, pulling your toes towards you and breathe. Keeping that chin down, the chin might wanna lift up, see if you can lower the chin. If you can't do that, lower your head down. If, you, if your neck is giving you trouble here and just press your legs and your hands into each other. Again, here's my isometric contraction. And then slowly let that go, lower one leg at a time. Take your knees and let them drop towards each other. You can widen your feet a little bit and just let that open the lower back a little bit. Sometimes we tense up there. It's not ideal, but it is what happens. So we're just letting that lengthen out a bit. Take a really deep breath in and see if you can breathe with your breath into that lower back, into the back body, into the side body. We tend to just breathe very shallow into our collarbones, into just the upper part of the lungs. But over time, what I would love for us to explore is that bigger breath into the whole body. Okay, now let's work the back body a little bit more. You're going to um, keep your feet on the floor, but the feet are not touching, touching. They're, they're about five inches away from each other. So right in line, um, the second and third toe are right in line with your hip bones. Hip bones being the prominent part in the front of the hip here. You're going to pull your feet down into the floor. Feel how that activates your hamstrings. Back of the leg should automatically come on and then soften the kidneys a little bit. And that should start to talk to your abdominals. And as you keep pulling your feet towards your hips, you're going to see if you can lift your pelvis up a little bit. Tiny bit, your pants will still be touching the floor. Do not go any higher than that, we'll get there. And then slowly lower the pelvis back down. Now, if your hamstrings just cramped, congratulations. Um, that's a good sign. That's a great sign that we're not pushing our quads with our quads, but that we're pulling with our hamstrings. 
You're going to do that again. You're going to pull the feet down into the ground and towards your hips. Activate the toes, especially the big toe, and then lift the pelvis just a tiny bit up. We're still letting the kidneys fall back in space. So we're trying not to lead with the lower back or the chest. And we're going to pull our shoulders down in the floor as well. So again, we're activating the whole back body and slowly release. So this is what we call bridging. It is not a yoga bridge. We, we, I do things differently that way. This is an activating for your hip extension, which is what we need to even just walk through life. Um, and we don't wanna walk through life with a big back bend and all that. So we're gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna pull the sits bones down to the ground. So we're sticking the butt out, pulling the feet towards your hips and then lifting the pelvis up. And maybe this time you could play around with lifting the pelvis higher. But at the same time, I want to try and keep my ribs low. I'm not trying to lead with the chest. I'm going to pull my feet towards my pelvis. I'm pulling my shoulders towards my feet. And then activating the, the, the glutes and the hamstrings to push our hips literally up and slightly forward. And then slowly lower that down. Very good. Okay, let's turn onto the side. And you're going to, you can either use a pillow here or you can use your arm to create a little pillow for yourself. And we're going to start out with both legs being straight and your right foot starts. So it's, it's all start from the front <laughs> right foot is on top right leg is on top so you're lying on your laying on the left side and your right foot is slightly in front of you about eight to ten inches your hand your arm is supporting your head and we're going to tuck so if you can see this you're going to tuck your right toes under so we don't want to point the foot here we're going to tuck the toes under. That gives you some internal rotation for your hip, which is really, really good. We mostly, again, spend our day more externally rotated, but internal rotation is beautiful. This is almost, it's a hip opener in itself if we turn the hip in. So we're going to reach the right arm, right hand up to the ceiling. We're going to reach, strongly through both feet. And by just reaching through the feet, imagine you wanted to touch the wall that's somewhere there, you start to activate your glutes. Right hand reaches up and you're going to look at the right hand. So this is now rotation for your head and neck. You're going to pull the kidneys a little bit back in space. We do not want a big back bend. And we're going to settle the, the bra strap back as well. And then maybe take that right hand slightly behind you. This is not about touching the floor with your right hand, but you're going to follow your right hand with your eyes. And we're breathing. Big breaths. We're breathing between the vertebrae, into the discs, where you can even imagine they're, 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 they're puffing up, they're lengthening. They're filling up with water. They're making you grow a little taller right now. And then slowly keep following the hand with your eyes. You're gonna lower that right hand down and you're going to bend both knees. The hips are stacked in line. So top hip is right in line with the bottom. And then I'm only going to reach out my top leg, my right leg. And I'm starting to do little circles here with my right leg. Keep a slight bend in that knee. And notice if your pelvis wants to move, it probably will. You can put your right hand onto your right hip and, and suggest the right hip to stay in place. Small little circles or big circles. But gauge the circles as reverse our circles to the, to the movement capacity or 
the capacity of holding that right hip still. Because if you move your leg and you move everything else, nothing is really gained here. That's more like for dancing. So we're moving the leg in circles. And then we're gonna tap the big toe down in the front. We're kicking that leg forward. I hope you have enough space. And then you're gonna take that top leg back and tap the toes down slightly behind you. The way back is much smaller than the way front. We're gonna lift the leg up, tap it down in the front, and you're gonna lift the leg up as high as you can. That could be barely lifted, right? We just wanna try and do the best. One more time going front, and one more time going back. As you go back, settle the kidneys back. So we're not arching the back to gain range for our leg. We, we don't need that range. We only wanna keep our ribs really soft. Our abdominals are holding the lower back in place. Very good. Now, use your right hand and push yourself up. You're coming to, our, to a little forearm hover. So you have two options here. You can turn your palm up and you can turn that forearm all the way out, which is the most ideal situation for your rotator cuff. Try not to have your shoulder come forward and your hand come in. If your hand is comfortable more here or here, that's great. And we're going to push the elbow down into the ground. You can see how my shoulder actually moves away from my ear. And then push down into your left hand and see if you can lift your pelvis up here. And then slowly lowering the pelvis back down. You're going to push the elbow, left elbow down into the floor, lift your pelvis up. If you've done this before, you might want to lift your top leg up. You can extend it or keep it bent, lower it down. We'll do one more time. Shoulder slides down the back, pelvis lifts up. I'm softening my kidneys back. I can keep my legs here. I can lift it and bend, or I can straighten it. Notice if your head starts to push forward. We're trying to minimize that, but we definitely don't want our chest to lift and we're up here. That's for another time. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. And even just coming to sitting for a moment, just check in. I can feel, I mean, I can even see this, how my left shoulder is way more relaxed and way more open just by doing these little side plank covers. So let's do the other side. We're going to straighten both legs. We're going to lie down. You're supporting your head with your right arm. You're going to take the left foot slightly forward, eight to 10 inches. Flexing both feet, we're tucking the toes. Reach your left arm up to the ceiling. I'm going to reach strongly through my feet, especially the, the right glute should start to activate right now as you reach it through that right heel. And then turn your head to look up at your left hand. This is almost maximum spinal rotation we have. And it's good that way. <laughs> If, even if you don't see your hand, this is everybody is at a different place, but trying to turn your head to see the thumb and then look with your eyes behind your left hand. At the same time, take the kidneys and the bra strap a little back in space. So we're not arching our back. We're only rotating head and neck. Take deep breaths. Take a breath right into the neck. Take a breath right into your glutes and reach through your feet. My right leg is active, but I'm not pushing my knees. I'm not hyperextending my knees. I'm just very active. My, my muscles hug the bone, literally, all of my leg muscles. And then slowly I rotate that. And then looking straight ahead, you're going to bend your knees. We're going to straighten the top leg. And we're going to do our little circles here. So slight bend in the knee, 
making sure so your left hip can hold your left hand can hold on to your left hip here so we're not moving the hip around you can see this a little bit on my shirt here the wrinkles of my shirt should really not be changing if i'm doing a good job i'm only circling my thigh bone in the hip socket we're we're told we're this is this is part of my pilates work where where we're always looking to isolate movement it's not an isolating of a muscle it's an isolation of a particular movement and that makes all of your muscles just come on a little more and then we'll reverse that keep your breath i like to think i'm making guacamole in my hip joint it's nice and smooth very good and then I'm going to take that top leg. I'm going to turn the toes to the floor so the heel is higher than the toes. I'm tapping the foot down. If you need some support, you can put your right hand, uh, your left hand in front of your rib cage, and then picking the leg up as high as you can. And then just setting the toes down just a tiny bit. Notice if your if your heart lifts, right? We want to keep the abdominals really engaged. I'm going to take that top leg forward again. And lift the heel and take the toes back. We call this the hot potato in Pilates. You don't want to touch that big potato here. One more time like that. Finding your, keeping your breath. Very good. And then bend the knee. So both legs are resting right on, in line with each other. And then we're going to push up and we come to a forearm plank again, or side forearm plank hover. Again, if possible, your hand, your fingers face straight away from you. That gives us external rotation for the rotator cuff. This is where we want to work the cuff, where we want to weight bear. We do not, and I'm going to just say this one more time because it's really important, you do not want to work your arm ever in this position, in that internal rotation and put pressure here. If this is not happening, all you're gonna try is to just pull that shoulder back in space as much as possible. Okay, I'm going to pull my elbow down into the floor. I'm softening the ribs, I'm sticking my butt out. I'm gonna lift my pelvis up. It's the tiniest lift here, could even, yeah. So just one line from my nose through to my breastbone, all the way to my pubic bone. Slowly lower down, drawing the elbow down, shoulder down the back, pelvis lifts up. Now, if you did this on the other side, try this on this side. It might be a completely different story. You might have been able to lift on the other side and you're not on this side. Keep your breath and slowly lower down and just come and check in with that again. I can definitely tell my shoulders are just at a different spot, in a better spot. Okay, so let's try one more thing here. So we're gonna come into, um, let's come to standing actually first. So big part of this work, what we're doing here is, <clears throat> strengthening the muscles in, in, in a different way. So I can just do hamstring curls or I can run or whatever the case may be, but to, to actually work the muscles while they're lengthening is, is very tricky yet very beneficial. So I'll just give you a little sample today. So we're gonna bend the knees slightly and see I'm slightly pigeon toed here too. I don't wanna, I wanna avoid for now standing like this. Because when we stand like this, usually our knees push back and my hip gets pushed forward and then my lower back gets all crunchy. This is my, this is my natural stance. So I'm not proud of that one. So I'm turning my feet in, I'm bending my knees and I'm sticking my butt out a little bit. If you've ever done Tai Chi or Qigong or some kind of a martial arts Dance is very much like that too, because we don't want to lock our knees. We want to be sensitive with our feet to the ground. So let's see if we can do this. Your knees are slightly bent and you're going to slowly start to round your spine forward. 
Go really slow. Take a nice deep breath here and then pull your feet down into the, into the earth. Feel how your legs start to activate and slowly round yourself back up. The head is the last thing to step. We all have the tendency to actually lift the head first and then we're just in our necks and our lower backs again. We're gonna do this again. Sit bones reach back. You're gonna round my spine. My head drops. I'm literally looking between my legs. I do not wanna look onto the ground or even behind my head. I wanna really look through my legs. Put your fingertips down on the floor and bend your knees a lot. You can even put your whole hand on the floor. Actually try the whole hand for now and push with your hands down into the ground. Doesn't matter how far you bend your knees here and, and pick up your kidneys, pull your kidneys up to the ceiling. Your whole wild body should be starting to activate again. I can feel glutes and hamstrings. I can even feel some shoulder loading, which is very important. And then slowly coming off of those fingertips and you're gonna slowly round back up again. Head is the last thing to stack. And let's do this one more time. Knees bend, sit bones come back and my back rounds. I'm looking through my legs and then putting your hands down on the ground. Now you're gonna shift the weight into your hands. Turn your palms a little, or your fingers a little bit out so your elbows can turn in. We don't want, again, we talked about that rotator cuff situation. We don't wanna turn the shoulders in. We wanna really turn them out. And then see if you can lift your heels up a little bit. And then you're gonna shift back into your feet, coming to your fingertips. And you're going to lift the heels. And then you're gonna shift back into your heels, fingertips on the floor. And one more time, shifting into the hands, heels lift up. Keep your head really, neck really long and, and, and looking through your legs. Again, we want that super long, long, long back of the neck. And then shift back into your feet and slowly come up. Head is the last thing to stack. Very good. Now, last thing before we're done, come down to your knees. And we're gonna to come to hands and knees here. If you need a little something underneath your knees, put the blanket or the pillow that you brought and, um, but we won't stay here for very long. We're gonna actually lift the knees off the floor. So my toes are tucked here and my pelvis is, in what we would call an anterior tilt. So it's that sits bone sticking out. But at the same time, I'm picking up my diaphragm. So I don't want to do this with a big arch in my lumbar. I also don't want to do this exercise too rounded. So my sits bones stick out. My hands are right under my shoulders. And then I'm going to pick up my knees. Tiny pickup. And then slowly lower the knees back down. I'm sticking my butt out, I'm picking up my kidneys, and I'm lifting my knees. My abdominals should be maybe slightly shaking here. Watch if your head drops down too far, lifting the back of the skull up, you're looking right between your thumbs. Slowly lower down. Reorient the pelvis, picking up the kidneys, and lift the knees one more time. Find your breath. Now see if you can move the earth side to side. Grab on with your fingers. So you're shifting yourself more into your left hand and more into your right hand. Grab on with your fingertips. You should be using your fingers, especially your thumb and index. Keep your breath and then come to center and lower your knees down. And then come one more time onto your back. So just lie down, take a moment, feel kind of the flush. The last exercise should have flushed you a bit. 
with me um, and just feel here, where is my body touching the ground? Am I touching, am I softening? Am I able to release the bones a little bit deeper? Let the feet and the legs turn out, hips are relaxed. Close your eyes and just take three deep breaths all the way down to the soles of your feet. And just see if something has shifted. And this could be the slightest little thing like you breathing a little better or your body is a little longer. Your kidneys are falling a little bit more to the ground. Your shoulders are a little wider, whatever it is. The more we consciously move, the more we become conscious of what we're doing when we're moving. So this is a practice, this is never a perfect. And um, yeah, I invite you to keep exploring and keep moving. And um, thank you very much for joining today. If you have any questions, you can call me or you can email me. Have a great day. Bye.